how you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Monday, October 23rd. Here in the Atlantic, we have uh, the big focus going to be Tropical Storm Sandy, which has now been named here south of Jamaica, spinning away and uh, developing in the Western Caribbean Sea. We have another storm out here that will probably be named Tony, and this will be heading out and uh, will not be a problem for anybody. The focus will be Sandy here, and uh, notice we have a very large area of cloudiness here, still weighted on the eastern side, but notice the difference from 48 hours ago when I last did a video you can see a much clearer spin with a lot more convection near the center of circulation now and uh, this was tanking to sub 1000 millibar pressures when the plane went in there yesterday and uh, when it goes in today it will likely find an even stronger circulation and because it's so large the winds haven't picked up significantly with it yet only 45 to 50 miles per hour right now uh, but of course the plane does need to get in there today uh, to do a run and confirm those winds but if we zoom in on this, you can see that uh, the convection is not really that deep right now. It was a lot deeper last night, but the curved convective bands on the eastern side are very healthy. You can still see a little bit of shear and dry air on the western side is limiting the convection in the northwest quad, but this will change quickly as this starts to move northward. Notice on the big screen here all the cloudiness to the north of the system, and this is showing you exactly where the system wants to go. See the old frontal boundary still sitting in here. You can see it, and uh, you can see the high pressure clockwise rotating to the north. There is a strong pressure gradient along this old funnel boundary and you can see the convection lighting off here. This is where pressures want to lower and this is where Sandy wants to move straight north across Jamaica and eastern Cuba into the Bahamas right where these clouds are developing here and as it does so, that's going to tighten the pressure gradient on the northern side of the storm and allow convection to really get going in the northern semicircle and uh, particularly probably the northwestern quadrant as the models have been indicating and as the pattern favors. And here's the GFS at uh, six hours out, six hours just so I can show you the precipitation that's falling. You can notice right here how kind of loose and large the circulation is here. Not very tight, fairly broad, but notice the high pressure centered over the Carolinas here and the strong pressure, gra pressure gradient over the Florida Straits and the Bahamas. If we go out a couple of days, you can see that the storm has moved up to the coast of Cuba, but notice the high pressure is remaining firm here uh, just to the east of North Carolina and this is really driving in the inflow towards the northern part of the storm here due to the pressure gradient and this is going to help tighten the northern side of the circulation. Now here's a view three days out of the low level vorticity, a measure of spin here in the colors and the wind barbs are 200 millibar winds, the upper upper winds aloft and uh, notice this upper trough over the eastern Gulf of Mexico. In fact if we go back to the satellite here it is um, over the eastern Gulf of Mexico currently positively tilted and fairly weak right now but as we go out over here look how it becomes negatively tilted in other words northwest to southeast orientation and uh, when you get it like this it usually means there's a lot of divergence aloft northeast of the trough axis which means air is spreading out and allows pressures to lower at the surface and you can see um, where Sandy is very obviously here in the bomb of purple and uh, it's right where the outflow is coming out of the top of the storm and curving clockwise out to the north and uh, when you get a trough like this it's usually easy to tell where the low pressure is going to be because of where all this upper divergence is and in some sense this is kind of a baroclinic influence on the storm and it looks like it's very sheared here normally when you see this if this was the middle of August or September we would look at this and this is, we would say this is a very sheared situation it is a sheared situation but for October and November this is actually one of the best schemes for intensification you can get because it's very hard to get a storm this far north and uh, at this time of year and actually have it strengthened. But when you have this occur, you get this kind of influence and this will actually be a strengthening storm in this case. A lot of dry air will be coming around the southern side, but I bet you there will be convection over the center of the storm at this time and it will actually be stronger than one might think given how much wind shear appears to be here. But the storm is moving in the direction of the winds aloft and there's a lot of divergence there and pressures will likely be falling. Now it's interesting if we go out to day six here on the GFS three days later, notice the trough has rotated up into the Carolinas, still negatively tilted here, um, but look at Sandy way out here to the east and there seems to be kind of a disconnect between where Sandy is and where the area of greatest divergence aloft is which is back here farther to the west and it's interesting now because this helps us transition into talking about the track of the system 
because remember, interestingly enough, a situation like this happened last year when we had the unnamed storm off of Cape Canaveral, Florida that came into the central Florida peninsula. And uh, during this time, there was a negatively tilted upper trough west of the state, and the GFS had the position of the low completely wrong uh, over relative to the trough. And the other models, uh, namely the European, had a little bit of a better idea of where the center would be. And I've noticed a couple of times over the years that in these situations where you have a negatively tilted trough interacting with the tropical system that the GFS can do this where it uh, puts the low in the wrong position relative to the trough because it doesn't deal with the baroclinic influence of this trough very well. It'll be interesting to see if that happens again because we do have the European coming up a little bit farther west and lingering west for longer closer to the eastern seaboard uh, relative to this upper trough here whereas the GFS just lets it escape straight out to the east northeast and loses the connection with the trough so we'll have to look at that now looking at the European over here, this is the run not from last night's 0Z, but the 0Z 24 hours before that. And uh, notice, I want to show the timing here. First of all, the European and the GFS have flipped from the last time I made a video. The European is now the one phasing this uh, into New England, and the GFS is the one taking it out to sea. Those roles were reversed a couple of days ago. They've since switched the European now three to four runs in a row has this phasing. The GFS six runs in a row has it escaping. Uh, but this is the zero Z run of the European 36 hours ago showing the storm over the northern Bahamas. Notice the location of the trough axis here over the Dakotas. Now we're going to go over to last night's zero Z run, the most recent one run, valid at the same time and notice the change. Here's the storm north of the Bahamas now. So the storm is moving a little bit faster, but even more noticeable is the trough axis now moving into Lake Superior. Notice how much farther east this is compared to the run from 24 hours previous. And this is a good 5 to 10 degrees farther east. So the European is showing the trough moving in a little bit faster, and uh, actually a lot faster. And this is significant because obviously the timing of the upper, upper level steering features is always important. And uh, since this trough is just now getting in over the Pacific Northwest. We have more observations of it going into the models, and we now have a little bit of a better idea of how this is going to evolve. And uh, the European is now showing this pro progressing faster, which makes it more likely to be able to catch this storm. Because one of the problems that I've been talking about on Facebook for the last couple of days is whether this trough will actually arrive too late. The saving grace for New England, if the, if this storm does cut off to the east like the GFS shows would probably be because this trough just comes in too late allowing the storm to wind itself up and then it just slips off to the east before the trough comes in to catch it but the European is starting to speed it up a bit and this is a trend we're seeing in some of the models except for the GFS which continues to flatten this and keep it a little bit slower coming in during this time frame and this is going to be very key because this trend suggests that the track up into the trough is now becoming the more likely option. And you can see the European uh, does this, the trough bombs out over the Ohio Valley and the storm itself bombs out south of Cape Cod. And this is not a category three as the pressure implies. This storm is transitioning to extra tropical, more of a, it's a hybrid nature, tropical characteristics and non-tropical characteristics, and it's much larger. So the winds are not as strong as they would be for a pressure of this caliber in a tropical cyclone. But there are still hurricane force winds with this, no doubt about it. And this would be one of the greatest autumn storms of all time for the eastern seaboard if this actually came to pass here. Now here's the GFS out to 78 hours and uh, this is showing the precipitation here in the colors and notice the northwestern quadrant is very strong with the storm and the reason I'm showing this right now is because as this storm develops this is going to actually play a role in the track because the heat distribution the release of latent heat meaning where the strongest thunderstorms are relative to the center of the storm can actually influence where it goes when there's baroclinic influence you can see the trough in the thickness layers over here where the colder air is, this is where the trough aloft is over the plains, still pretty far off to the west. As this develops, as the northwestern quadrant strengthens, it wants to bring in any cold air that is available off to the west, and the pressure falls want to occur to the north and to the west of the storm center. So if there's an upper trough coming to pick it up, it's more likely to want to phase with the trough in this kind of a situation. But if the storm is allowed to become symmetrical and this convection wraps all the way around and it becomes a looser circulation, 
um, as the dry air mixes in, it's going to be less likely to phase. And this is what the GFS actually shows occurring because the trough is still back here slower than the European has it so that you notice the convection wraps back around, it becomes a little bit more symmetrical and the circulation becomes broader, more subtropical-like, and uh, it is less likely to want to phase because when the convection is offset to the west here it's in a sense not very symmetrical but all of the latent heat release is getting directed in the outflow out to the north and eastern side of the storm which helps keep this ridge strong in here and again helps draw in the the baroclinic support from the west and really helps this try to phase with the trough but if it's more symmetric the heat di distribution is also more symmetric and it's more likely to just slip out in the stream flow on the southern side of the big bowling ball low that's sitting out here and that's how the GFS lets it escape and you can see energy splitting off to the east as well. The European does not show that and uh, that's what the Canadian and the UK met and the no gaps now all show as well and actually the Japanese model. So the GFS is on its own in this case and it's becoming progressively obvious uh, that the track is probably going to lean more towards the west than, than the GFS has it. The track I have is a blend right now of the European Ensemble mean which has the south, south of Cape Cod in seven days and the UK met ensembles which bring it up straight north into the Bahamas, cut it northeast, and then bring it back into New England. The reason I'm not taking a track farther west than that, as some of the models have shown into New Jersey or Maryland, is because the trough is coming in a little bit late, and I do think this will try to take off and look like it's going to try to escape, but then get brought in as the trough bombs out to its west. And uh, of course, right now we're still talking about a seven day forecast and this is far from guaranteed. You can see some of the UK men ensembles have it escaping and we have the uh, GFS models, of course, still having this escaping. Half of them bring it into New England here. Half of the ensemble members bring it out to the east. And uh, both of these possibilities are very much on the table and uh, again a lot will come down to the timing of the trough and the distribution of the storm how it looks when it gets into the Bahamas this is again going to depend a lot on how the storm actually looks and uh, right now here's the track that I have this map is a little awkward because I had to extend all of this latitude to get this track in uh, but I have this strengthening uh, fairly quickly as it nears Jamaica. The NHC has this at hurricane status. I'm keeping it just below for now. I think it's going to reach its maximum intensification as it nears the Bahamas here as it approaches this convergence boundary with the frontal uh, boundary that I showed you on the satellite and uh, it will reach its peak intensification period here and uh, become a hurricane. It could even become a category 2 during this time uh, but we'll have to see what it looks like when it clears the Caribbean islands and then it's going to come up and I have it as a hybrid cyclone of hurricane force south of Cape Cod in six days and uh, we'll have to see where it goes from there right now this is implying the track comes in New England but you can see the cone is very wide out to the east because of the possibility of this trying to escape away but right now I think the more likely track is to the west and eventually getting captured by the trough and coming in under Barrow Clinic support and this could turn into quite a storm for the east coast that folks should be watching because this is not expected usually from tropical systems in the fall this won't be a fully tropical system as it comes in but it will be one of the strongest fall storms that anyone has experienced in this area of the world here so it is something to keep a, a keep quite an eye on because it will be quite a storm if it does form and will be quite dangerous so we will keep an eye on this as it develops all right that's it for today thanks for watching